Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today I want to discuss about the exercise. Uh, I give you the four exercises in the, the Google Classroom. So make sure you are finished. So today we need to check the answer. Okay, let's see the first one. Okay, the first one, the question they call you to write the, all the support for animals and give the example. So support, we just got three only. Okay, remember the three one. Okay, the first one is uh, endoskeleton exoskeleton and also hydrostatic skeleton then they want you to give some example so depend for your example lah, because i give you so many example so from here i just write the simple one okay first one example they put the mammals example they put the cats okay we got so many elephant human also can after that we put the birds okay another one is an exoskeleton there's a external one we got glass hopper crab and the hydrostatic we put it as a caterpillar and also the earthworm so this one is just a simple example we got so many so depend for your answer lah. then we go to the second question give three uh, function to support the system in animal just now you give so the three support we got exoskeleton endoskeleton and the hydrostatic so from here you need to give the function actually that three things is what's the function so the title we already know the function already they say about support maintain the shape and also movement so this three is a main okay main function for this skeleton endoskeleton and the hydrostatic okay now we're going to see the question number two they want you to complete the tree map below stating the function of endoskeleton so we're going to see the first one you can say support your body weight number two maintain your body shape okay third one you can say about the movement okay one more thing that can protect your internal organ so this one is a some important part why we need the endoskeleton so this one is a full function Continue to the label. Okay, this one, the uh, the system, the skeletal system. So need to label all the part. Okay, if not mistake in your notes, they already got the label. So before that, you make sure you are memorized. You need to memorize every part. After the spelling, after that you need to label by yourself. Okay, the first part they show the shoulder there. That's a cervical okay the next one the center one for your breast that part is a sternum then followed by the small wound the small wound the soft one we call it as a rib cap sometimes we call it as a rib sometimes we call it as a rib cap okay actually it's the same meaning okay let's see the center one your turung ruso your tulang ruso the tulang ruso we call it the vertebra column okay vertebra column Okay, now we go to the bottom one at the at the center. That one we call it pelvis glider. Okay, then we go to lower part. Okay, at your knee there, that one called patella. Okay, then we go back to the top. Okay, for your head, that one is what? That one is a skull. Okay, at the shoulder, shoulder as one is a scapula. Okay, then after that we go to the hand. Okay, upper part for your hand, that one is a humerus. Okay, this one, the following for your hand one, they want to do some uh, correction because follow uh, when I think using the PowerPoint, that one I label wrong already. Suppose the outside one. Okay, the outside one we call radius. Inside one we call ulna. Okay, for the 6.1 PowerPoint I show you, I show the balik. I show the outside is outer. Support is outer inside, radius is outside. Okay, let's see the lower part. Okay, lower part, the biggest one, we call it tibia. Okay, then the smaller one bone, we call it as a fibula. Okay, this, so this one is all the labels you need to know. Okay, then we continue with the second exercise. There's a part two. Okay, I think this one, no problem because they got choose. They let you to choose. They have to just fill in the blank only. So I fast forward to show you what should be in the blank. Okay, first one, the vertebrate for endoskeleton. We got cats, cow, rat, 
bill, eagle, and snake. Okay, how about the exoskeleton? That's the external. Okay, from here we got scorpion, we got ant, centipede, after that we got grasshopper, crocodile, and also the spider. Okay, now we go to the last part. That's a uh, hydrostatic. Okay, hydrostatic, we got jellyfish, we got sludge, we got caterpillar, we got tadpole, we got earthworm. The last one should be the... I cannot see already. The last part is what? You can refer your your exercise. Huh? Uh, the last part is the starfish. The starfish. Okay? Mark it by using the red pen. Then you know you understand or not understand. Okay, then we go to the question number two. Okay, question number two, they show the diagram for the crab. They want to exchange the exoskeleton with new one. Okay, so the small size. When the chain becomes the new one, it should become the bigger size. Now they say what happened to the size of the uh, exoskeleton of the crab. Okay, during the growth. Okay, the size must be increased. Okay, the size increased. Can you name the process shielding the skin of the exoskeleton? The process we call it is what? Ecdysis. Remember? Change the skin. We call ecdysis. Okay, now we need to state the two animals that, you, that undergo the ecdysis process. So from here, first one, they show the crab already. Is it? Then you give another one. Okay, we got crocodile, we got scorpion. You also can say about a glass hopper. Uh, that one got changes about the skin. Next, we go to number, continue the question two, there's a B. Okay, they show you the step. Okay, the step of the growth curve of the insect in an exoskeleton from the egg state until to the adult. Okay, let's see, we need to read about the passage below. Okay, they say during the process X, okay, X, X is a, this one is an egg, is it? One, two, second month. Okay, so from here, they show about by the arrow on the curve, rapid growth. Okay, occur in the animals. Okay, animals inhale A to expand their bodies and also break the old exoskeleton. New exoskeleton will come out. Okay, the new one. Okay, animal will under, undergo a few of the process of the X before they becoming the adults. So from here, uh, what means of the process X? The whole process X, when it changes the skin, we call what name? The name should be ecdysis. That means during the whole egg until month, they mop, they mop about the skin until they go to the adult. The whole process we call ecdysis. Okay, now we're going to see the next one. Okay, now answer the question. There's the movement of the animal. They have the hydrostatic skeleton. So this one, remember, we got uh, muscle, longitudinal muscle and also the... Circular muscle. Okay, after that they need to contract. Okay, they need to expand. So after that they can move. Okay, so from here they say, uh, please stick it. The animal which have the hydrostatic skeleton. So from here we need is the caterpillar with the hydrostatic. After that we got lage. Okay, grasshopper, uh, not hydrostatic. Okay, grasshopper is an exoskeleton. So from here, your answer is the first one and the second one. Okay, now we fill in the blank. Okay, what are the function of the hydrostatic skeleton? First one, what the body? Uh, we know lah, support, maintain the shape. Another one is protect the organ. Organ is it? So this all is a fixed one. So we're going to see the first one. Support, maintain, and also protect. Okay, then we follow the one number four how does the hydrostatic pressure on the fluid can help the movement of the animals such as the earthworms okay how they will help so we're going to see the answer uh the answer start from here the what body okay we need to answer okay we can choose from here okay so the first one is the okay we're talking about the this one the pair of the muscle okay the pair of the muscle on the body wall okay we do two process you must have contract and also relax then after that they can move is it so you just put okay the wall 
the body will contract after that relax alternately so how about the result the result there will uh, the resulting the hydrostatic pressure to extend okay that can make when you contract and relax you make a hydrostatic pressure okay after that they will extend and also shorten is it when they extend and shorten finally the body for movement okay they help for movement Okay, next we go to the next one. Okay, again, the same thing. I think this one no problem. I straightforward to show the answer. Okay, first one, where the show? Okay, the shape well shoulder is it? The shoulder you can say, uh, uh, we can say about this uh, petroleum guider. You also can say this, uh, uh, the first one we say what name it there? Cavicle. Okay, cavicle. So from here, they don't have cavicle like you to choose. So we just write petroleum guider. Okay, then for your hand, the first part they showed you there's a humerus. Okay, then you're following the outside one. Outside, remember radius, ah? Huh? Outside is a radius, inside is a ulna. Okay, after that, the following is a pelvis. Okay, pelvis. Uh, sorry, this one is a ulna. Then this part is a uh, pelvis, pelvis glider. Okay, this one is a petula. Okay, then we see this part. The small one is a fibula. The small one is a fibula. Then we go to G. G is a scurf. Okay, center is a sternum. H, the small one. Small one, I say we can say about a rib cat. We also can say about the ribs. Okay, so after that, we see the eye. Eye is a center part. Tulang luso. The one is a vertebral column. Okay, then we go to the K. K is a upper part. This one, we call it as a fem female. Female. Okay, after that we got JK L. Okay, L. This one is called it the biggest one. There's a tibia. Okay. Then we continue with the next question. Okay, now we need to label. Okay, complete the sentence for the land and also the aquatic vertebrate. Okay, and also the bird. Okay, then we start from here. Okay, the weight of the terrestrial vertebrae is supported mainly by the okay, shoulder, shoulder and also the hips. Okay, so from here we got two glider, is it? One is a pectoral, another one is a pelvis. So from here we continue. Okay, down this one endoskeleton they support their support their what? Support their weight lah. Okay, then uh, give them give them the stronger and the give them the stronger and also what their soft tissue they want to protect their soft tissues okay then we're going to see the bone bone of the birds okay this is the birds huh? okay so from here we start here birds have the hollow bone that are although hollow but they're still strong and also light than the compact bone so of the same length and also the weight the hollow bone enable them to important the bird want to fly okay they want to fly okay then we go to the last part that one is the okay the last one is the uh, endoskeleton okay now let's see this part Okay, they show about the and glider. Okay, same lah. We got two glider, is it? Okay, petrola and also the pelvis of the aquatic vertebrate are very, again, are very strong. Okay, strong again and also, okay, wait lah. Glider of the aquatic vertebrate are very and their body weight is supported by the, okay, so from here, remember aquatic, they got buoyant force to support. So from here we can say about the pectoral and pelvis actually that's a not strong, small and also the weak. Okay, so their body is supported by the remember, there's a buoyancy force, water buoyancy force because something to be support. So that means the pectoral and pelvis is only too strong already. They still can, still can alive. Okay, so you can survive at there. Okay, then we continue with this one factor. Okay, factor uh, that will 
affecting the stability of the animals. Okay, now you can see this diagram. We've got two animal here, P and Q. So from here, the what position of the center gravity, the object will be. Okay, so we say the lower. Lah. So normally, the lower the position of the center of gravity, okay, when you lower, what happens? You find it they are more stable. So that means the more stable the object will be. Now we see they ask you animal which one is more stable? Sure, it's a Q. Animal Q is more stable. Why? Because it got lower center of gravity. Okay, so they become stable. Okay, now we're going to see the second part. Second part, they're talking about the base area. So the base area, which one more stable? Sure, the base area become bigger. That's a Y. So from here, we see here the base area. Okay, the base area, we're going to check. Okay, Y should be the bigger base area. So the bigger the base area, or say the larger, so the higher the stability of the object. Okay, so the answer be here. Okay, bigger the base, stable, more stable. Now we're going to see which one animal is more stable. The answer is Y. Okay, the Y is more stable. Why? Because they got bigger base area. Okay, got bigger base area. Okay, then we go to the next one. Okay, you need to label. The first part is show the giraffe. Giraffe must say about the center of gravity. Okay, now the giraffe is spending the leg wider, drinking the water too. Why? They want to spread it out because they want to lower, lower the center of gravity and to increase base area. Okay, lower, then increase the base area. Sorry, minus my base area. Okay, this one is the increase, uh, increase the base area. Okay, then we continue for this part. Okay, the crocodile and also the tortoise, they have the low center gravity because already they are already placed on the land already. Sure, the area become large. Then the center gravity become lowest because they are flat on the floor. Okay, now we go to kangaroo. Okay, the kangaroo, ah, this one increase. Ah. So the kangaroo, the first one, they say uh, they support the body by using the tail because they can increase the base area. Okay, these are the big animals. The big animal that has the yeah, that has the big uh, lower center of gravity. Okay, they go downwards. So from here, this one, the answer is lower their center of gravity. Okay, then the exercise part three, I just show you the answer. So make sure the line should be correct. Okay, then we continue for this part. Okay, I give you the answer already. Okay, process, you undergo the agnosis. So first one, scorpion. Okay, and this one is a spider. Okay, we circle already. Okay, number three, segment. Okay, they show you the changes of the longitudinal and circular muscle of the segment P and Q. Okay, now we check the P. Okay, we check the P first. Okay, the P become lengthened, become long already. Okay, then this part Q is the shortened. So we're going to see the segment P. Segment P is a lengthened. Okay, so they ask you, uh, longitudinal muscle, what happened? Longitudinal muscle is a relax. Okay, when starting, there's a relax when lengthened. Okay, muscular must be contract. Okay, now it's a segment Q. Segment Q is opposite. Longitudinal now is a contract. Then the circular is a relaxing. Okay, because of this one, relaxing and also contract. They become shortened and long, uh, shorter and also lengthened. Then finally, they can move it. Okay, then we'll do this part again. Okay, this one again. So A is what? A is a curve. Okay. Okay, the following B, B is what, B they show about the glider, is it? Okay, petrol glider, scapula also can. Okay, after that we got C, C is a humerus. Okay, D, there's an outside, there's a radius, the outer. Okay, F, F is a top part female, female. 
Okay, then we go to Gigi's Battler. Okay, we see the H. H is a small part. Small part, we call it fibula. Okay, I. I is a bigger one. We call it as a tibia. Okay, then we go to the J. J is a pelvis, is it? Pelvis glider. K. K is a center, sternum, is it? So we call it as a sternum. Okay. K L L is a small tulang. Okay, tulang yang kecil. We call it as a rib cap, is it? Okay, you can label as a ribs, also ribs cap. Okay, M. M is what? M is a scavicle. Okay, at the shoulder part, scavicle. Okay, last one. N N is a. Okay, we label scuff scuff already. So this one should be the facial boot. Okay, facial boot. Okay, then we go to the last question.